Hey everybody, it's Dan over at Smoke Daddy Inc. at Pellet Pro Grills. Uh, today we're going to do a little uh, unboxing video and installation of our single door vertical smoker, the 2300. As you can see, we take a lot of care with packaging these up so they get to you safely. Now, these ones have pellets on here, so we put a little extra care into them. Uh, the biggest thing is when you receive it, if it doesn't look exactly like this, if there's any signs of damage or whatsoever, please do not accept it, and we'll go from there with the kit and replace it. Now, uh, let's go over here, and I'll show you the unboxing portion. All right, so after you get it, everything uh, off of the pallet, usually with help from another person, that's always best. Uh, you just take the cardboard box off from the top, comes off very easily. Uh, the next thing you want to do is take the plastic, bring it down all the way, and we're going to remove everything from the inside. Uh, I'll put it right here on the table. So you just take the handles off like this. You can see the hopper is right here in the front. Take that out. take everything out here and put it on the table. So I'll show you exactly what it comes with in just a second. All right, so now that we got everything out, as you can see everything's out of the vertical here, uh, we have the hopper assembly, which if you look inside here, that is where the circulation fan and the uh, uh, safety crate is located. So make sure you check that. Uh, we've got the rib rack, three grates, your door handle, side handle, the uh, housing for the controller that goes on the side, got your bottom door, your uh, side smokestack, heat diffuser, drip pan, your grease tray for the bottom, as well as your full cover. So that's basically everything that comes with it, you know, casters, meat probe, gauges, hardware, and the tools. It'll come with this nice little wrench, it's a 10 millimeter wrench. Uh, what's nice to have around if you have a 10 inch uh, socket with a ratchet that goes a little bit faster. Uh, you also need a Phillips head screwdriver or if you have a cordless drill with a Phillips head on there, makes it a lot, a lot more faster. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to close up the vertical here. We took it off and we're going to use some uh, foam pieces to protect the, the backing. So on the back side we're going to just lay it down. You can have another person help you if you're not comfortable doing it by yourself. Take all the plastic off at the bottom. And then using these smaller bolts from the the hardware kit, we're going to attach these casters on each corner. Now you'll see we have two that swivel and two that are stationary. It's nice to have the swivel side on this side because that's where your handle is going to be at. So then you can swivel it that way. So put the swivel ends on this side like this and your stationary ones on this side. So I'm gonna put these on, we'll come right back. All right, so we tightened down all the uh, casters real securely. Uh, the next thing you wanna do is the, the ones that swivel, put them in this position and lock them. Because when you're gonna put it up like this, it's uh, sometimes nice to have another person to help you. Once they're locked, it won't slip away from you. So just tip it up like this. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to be installing the hopper as well as the controller housing on the top. We'll be right back. All right, so now we got our hopper assembly out here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to connect these uh, Molex connectors up to here. Everything is color coded, which makes it a lot easier. So basically, it's very simple. Just take your hopper assembly, put it inside the auger arm hole, like this, and rest it. Right around there, you take some of that material. Make sure you're, you're not going to pull these out. Make sure you have some left here. Uh, we're going to 
connect these via color. So black and white go to black and white. Green and white go to green and white. Red goes to red. And blue goes to blue. Very, very simple. Now, before we put this hopper on, there's also, if you look in the back here, there is a ground wire that attaches here via a uh, Phillips head screw. So take that screw out first and attach this wire securely to the uh, cabinet. So once you've done that, we're gonna take the, our wires here, pull up that extra slack as we put this back on here, just like that. Now, you're gonna rest it here. Now it'll come along with these extra long bolts, four of them, which are gonna attach the hopper assembly. So it's easiest to have somebody on the other side to lift up the hopper so that it's uh, perpendicular like this. On the inside, there's four attachment holes over here where you're gonna uh, secure the hopper to the cabinet. Now this is where you wanna use that 10 millimeter uh, extension or the 10 millimeter socket to do that. So we're gonna mount that real quick and then we'll Come back to the controller. Perfect, so now our hopper is attached. Uh, we're going to install our new higher mounted controller that we have on our verticals now. So first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna take this little housing piece off. You're gonna unscrew that wing nut. Take that out like this. And there's four Phillips head screws that are already in there. So we're gonna take these screws out just like that. And then we're gonna take our piece here that we just removed and we're going to feed the RTD wire with all the other connectors uh, into here. So from this direction, we're gonna feed them down like this. Kind of pull that, take all the excess out. And then we are going to put these screws back in here. So I'll be right back. Now that we have this piece attached, the next step is to connect all of our connectors here, starting with the RTD probe. Uh, same, with, same with the bottom, they're all color coded, makes it nice and easy. So once more, red to red, black to black, blue to blue, and green to green. Now with all this excess wire, we're just going to stuff this right into this housing here. So we're going to take up all that, that wire, just stuff it right back in that housing. And then we're going to put this back on, just like that and then secure it with your wing nut. Now it's adjustable, so depending on where the light's at or where you're located, you can adjust this up and down for easy reading. Now that we did that, we're gonna go on the other side and attach some other uh, accessories. Be right back. So our next step is to install the reverse flow style uh, side chimney. So you're going to remove all of the 10 millimeter bolts that are already attached to the cabinet. Uh, this portion is going to attach just like this and then we're also going to get a little topper along with that so that goes on the top two here which that faces down like this so now we're going to install the side handle and the door handle first thing you want to do is the bolts and washers that are attached onto the handles we're going to take those out Separately, we include some larger uh, black bolts and oversized washers. It's going to be a little easier to install them that way. So for the side handle, what you're going to do is you want to make sure you keep these little decorative washers on the handle itself. These bent washers will go on the inside here, like that. And then you're going to take your 
handle here, your large bolt, and attach it like this. And you're going to do that with the same, uh, with the opposite side. Perfect. So now uh, onto the door gauges. So it comes with a nut already on the gauge. So you take the nut off, put the gauge on the front of the door, and then put the nut back on hand tight. Twist it like that, look at it, get it kind of centered, perfect. And then you're gonna do the same thing for the bottom two. On the inside, you'll see here, you have the RTD probe that is uh, not attached. So you're going to remove the piece of tape here, There's two Phillips head screws. For mounting it, you're gonna remove the screws here. And then you're going to mount that probe right to the side. So before I put everything back in the cabinet, I just wanted to get a little close up here on the new style burn pot we have. Um, it's fully stainless steel uh, instead of regular holes. It's redesigned with these flaps which create a vortex effect. What that does, it helps create a more efficient burn and it helps kick that ash out of that burn pot, which you know sometimes is a problem. Uh, we also, what we did was redesign uh, the auger tube so it sits right up against the, the top of that burn pot. So all those pellets drop into it instead of on the fire. Along with this gasket that helps seal all that air inside the auger arm. So what we're going to do next is uh, I like to take a little rag, wipe down the diffuser and the drip pan, put the diffuser in like this, center that. Next is your drip pan. The large flange goes on the right side. And then install the racks. Now we also have this unique seven section rib rack. So you can put seven ribs all together in a line. Saves a lot of room and you get that airflow in between your ribs. And mind you, these are all stainless steel racks. They're very, very thick gauge. We changed the design to these more traditional style racks because they clean easier and they're much safer. One other thing that we love to recommend is using a water pan on the bottom rack. The water pan that's going to help catch the grease. Um, you'll keep keep that grease inside instead of anywhere else. You know, you can put water in there, add moisture. So any regular size serving tray, just like that, will work. Now the bottom part. You're going to use your, your grease tray. Now you can put like a small half pan in there for easy cleanup also. So this just sets in here like that. And then last thing is your bottom door. Now there's a spring loaded pin here. What you do is you line up the bottom pin first. Next step uh, is to install the circulation fan. So the first thing you want to do with this is what we're going to do is four screws on this side, the other four screws on this side. We're going to take this housing off first, and then we're going to take this plate off on the top. Be right back. Oh, okay, now we got these screws off of the housing, which comes off just like that our little cover plate off so we're going to set these aside right now uh, this nut that's on here is a reverse thread so first you're going to remove that nut and then the screws that we use to take off the housing we're going to re we're going to attach this onto the top so if we come along to the back here You want the on and off button to face forward. Just gonna install your shaft down there and the four uh, bolt holes are already there for you. So we're gonna take our Phillips head screwdriver and attach this 
on all four corners. Excellent. So I put the housing back on to the circulation fan. So the next step is to put the fan on. Now, as you can see here, the fan, it's keyed. So in order to install it, the fan blades, the blades face down. So you want the flat face uh, up like this. Now, this shaft, you're gonna find your flat surface, the keyed surface, and then install your fan blade on that like that. Now keep that in place, and then at the same time, install your nut. Remember, this is a reverse thread nut. So you're just gonna hand tighten that on the fan, just like that. So everything is installed, everything's all ready to go. One other thing I wanted to mention too, it's really unique with these uh, vertical smokers, the, both the double door and the single door, is we have this outlet, uh, 110 outlet with a couple USB chargers. So with this circulation fan, you can plug it in right there, and then you still have another outlet and USBs for any other accessories, probes you might have that run off power. So that's the installation video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check us out at smokedaddyinc.com or give us a call at 847-336-1329. Thanks for looking. Go start cooking.